So, my name is Colin Manning, and I haven't met any of you yet, I don't think, but I'll probably see you all next semester. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Computing as well as Maeve, and Maeve has offered me this hour so that I can tell you about an economics experiment I want you to participate in. So this has absolutely nothing to do with web development fundamentals. <laughs> but you might you might want to take notes. Maybe you do want to take notes. Maybe it's very, very interesting. We shall see. No. So there's an attendance sheet going on there. If you could um, put your name next to your email address just so we can see who's, in, who's here and who's not. It's important for me to know that the list of people in the class is far greater than the actual number of people in it, so I need to um, know who to invite and who not to. No, so prediction markets are online betting exchanges. No, guys, I don't mind. You don't have to. I mean, this isn't anything to do with this module, so if it doesn't interest you, you can just go. That's fine, too. You know, but if you're staying, um, be quiet. Okay, so prediction markets are online betting exchanges that allow people to bet money on the outcomes of future events. Now, one of the most popular prediction markets, if you like, would be paddypower.com. I mean, there you, you know, bet money on the outcome of future events, you know, whether Barca is going to beat Celtic. But more generally, prediction markets, they can use real money or pretend money. And they're a good mechanism for getting people to reveal what they actually think. And you can get them to reveal what they really think and you can also get them to reveal their level of confidence in, in the opinion that they're expressing. So if Ronan O'Gara took a break from training below and came up and said, you know, is Munster going to win their next game? And he asked everyone in the room, you might all say yes. Yes, Ronan. Now, if he asked you then for 50 euro, like, to bet on, on Munster winning, well, then you might be, mm, you know, well, you know, I left it at home. Or something you know you might not be as confident if actual money was involved so it, it encourages people to reveal one their actual opinion because there's an incentive for, for them telling what they really believe and also you can gauge the strength of their conviction by how much money they're prepared to to put on the table The most famous prediction market is the Iowa Electronic Markets in Iowa. And the University of Iowa has been running this for a number of years now. And it does a very good job of predicting who is going to win elections. It does, generally, it does as well or better than the best polling techniques that people have. So they've done lots of research on this. But really, for someone on this side of the Atlantic, it comes as no great shock to know that Paddy Power is always right. It comes as no great shock to know that the money is, is hardly ever wrong. So we're kind of familiar with the, the, the concept here anyway. Now, in the Iowa electronic markets, you can bet up to $500 on $100, okay? This is a, just a screen capture from the Iowa, the Iowa Electronic Markets the other day. And it was giving, for example, that bit I've highlighted there, that's saying that it was giving Obama a 53% chance of winning the election that's coming up. Which I think is kind of low, actually. I'm surprised it's that low. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, it depends. We probably have a different view, so we think he can walk on water, whereas Americans don't think of highly feminists as, as we do. Do you know? But obviously, we don't get to vote, so what we think maybe isn't as important as what they think. But certainly, for me, 53% seem to be quite low, you know? Okay? Now, another very popular 
prediction market is one that uses play money, and that's the Hollywood Stock Exchange. And that allows players to buy and sell shares, virtual shares, in actors and directors and movie projects and stuff. And movie studios actually use information from the Hollywood Stock Exchange to see kind of which stars are bankable, which, which projects might work, which ones might not. And traders um, play for train, play money. But you could, for example, um, buy stocks in a movie that hasn't come out yet. And then, depending on how much money that movie makes in the first week, you'd get a dividend, you'd make a profit. So you might um, think a, a movie is going to make loads of money, so you might be prepared to pay a high price for its shares in anticipation of making money. Or, you know, you might decide that actually, you know, that's going to be a lousy movie, no one's going to go see that. And you might decide to, to bet against that being a success. So here's just a screenshot from my portfolio. I haven't been playing very much, really. I used to... I had a kind of a, a selection of Irish actors in my portfolio. And I had... Um, I bought Colin Farrell's shares way back, but nobody wanted them. And then when I had hung on to them, you know, and then when Total Recall came out, like his price shot way up. So I sold those for, for the cash and took the cash because the people were prepared to pay a very high price for them. Um, hmm? I don't remember. I can look it up. But, you know. but more than I paid for them, which was the point. The point was they sold for way more than I paid for them. I had loads and loads of shares in Natalie Portman when she was a nobody, but I don't go to the movies that much anymore, I don't get out much. So um, I didn't know that Black Swan was on it, so I sold my shares in her before Black Swan came on the scene. So I sold, I sold her way too, way too cheap because she's like a major, major property now. So, um, so I have a selection there of Irish and UK people just just for the crack. Um, there's this TV show that I know nothing about, but just to see how this worked, I, I, I bet against that, but it seems to be, it's fairly popular, so I, I lost some money on that. You know, but, no. So if you take Killian Murphy, for example, you can't actually see the edge of the screen here, on, on the screen here. Um, his, um, his share price has gone way, way down. So I had some shares in Killian Murphy. Um, He's kind of on the, on the decline, it seems. But you know, something might come out soon, or we might get news of a, a new project he's involved in, and his share price might go up. But he's about 60 now, down from like as much as 120. So his share price has, has halved. He was um, way up there for a while. Then you can have um, movies. So these are movies that are coming out soon, and people are basically betting on how much money they're going to take in when they open. So, on the day I took this screen down, Guillermo de Toro's Pinocchio was up like 9%, whereas something like Taken 2 was down 5%. Um, you know, other things were, were down. So, people would make money then depending on how much money those movies make in the first you know, week or so of their box office figures. So if a studio has a movie and the Hollywood Stock Exchange says it's going to tank, like, then maybe they decide, well, okay, it needs better advertising, or maybe we should only open it in a few places first, rather than spending money and opening it in loads, and see how they go. So studios actually use that money. Now, Intrade is an online betting exchange in Dublin where you can bet on non-sports type events, and you can use real money. In terms of um, online gambling, Ireland is kind of the, the online Las Vegas, really. Um, you know, it's a big, um, we're big players in, in that particular industry. So in trade, for example, on the same, on the same day that the Iowa exchange was giving Obama a 53% chance of winning, Intrade is giving him a 67% chance, chance of winning. Now that's a big difference, really. 
Um, on intrade, people could bet, you know, serious money. So, I mean, you could bet five grand on Obama to win if you wanted on intrade, whereas the amounts in Iowa are smaller. Um, anyone can bet in both markets. So, it's in, uh, but I imagine that there are, well, I don't know, who knows, but I imagine there are more non-Americans betting on this. But it's certainly um, interesting how there's a difference. You can't quite see on the screen there, unfortunately. Um, there's a spike. Um, there's a spike in Obama there, uh, not so long ago. We went up to almost eighty percent. And I wonder was that when they had the, the during the last debate, did people on Intrade think, well, he really did well? Then it went down again. It's like at sixty, you know, <coughs> sixty, sixty-seven now. I'm wondering then, did people hear, well, actually, Americans didn't think it was great at all. And they're the ones voting. So maybe the price came down again. But at one stage, in trade was giving him an 80% chance of winning. So you could, um, oh, yeah, actually, you can see it on the next screen here. It goes up to 80 here, OK? It comes down again in a short time to about 60 odd, what we saw there. But at one stage, it was pushing 80. That there is, is almost 80, which is very high as well. You know, but like I said, I'm surprised that the Iowa exchange has given him such a, such a low price. No. So companies then can run their own prediction markets as well. I mean, if you want to know if Barca is going to beat Celtic, you can ask Paddy Power. If you want to know who's going to win the election, you can ask Paddy Power or Intrade. If you want to know how many printers you're going to sell next quarter, I like, it's not worth Paddy Power's while asking that question. But it might be something that's of interest to you and your customers, and your shareholders, and your employees. So some companies run prediction markets to try and get answers to the questions that are important to them. So HP, for example, has used prediction markets to predict printer sales. So they would have had forecasting techniques that they would normally use to figure out, you know, how many printers of type X are we going to sell so how many should we make and stuff? And they found that when they gave people pretend money and asked them to bet on how many printers they were going to sell, they got different answers. And they also found that the answers they got from people betting the pretend money <coughs> turned out to be more accurate than the forecasting methods that they had. And so they've done a lot of work on on prediction markets. Now, if you're making printers and you, you think you're going to sell 5 million and it turns out you're only going to sell 2 million, well, like 3 million extra printers is a lot of printers going to go to waste. You know, so it may be important for them to, to know these things. Google also has ongoing prediction markets and they predict, like, you know, when is, a, when is Google going to open an office in such and such a place? You know, what products will finish, be finished on time? What products will be popular, you know, how many people are going to sign up to Gmail in the first six months, that kind of thing. And so those are questions that are important to Google, but that wouldn't be worth Paddy Power's time. No. There are two ways, really, that contracts in prediction markets work. And it depends on the nature of the event. So you're used to, say, going into, into a betting office and, you know, you know, putting a tenner on Barcelona at 10 to 1. Not sure if we get 10 to 1 in Barcelona, but, you know, we, we, um, we know how that, that works. With prediction markets, it's more, it's more stock markety, you know. And with prediction markets, you can buy shares in an event, okay. And if that share, if that, if that event comes to pass, then the shares will be worth, they'll pay $100. If the event doesn't happen, the shares will be worth nothing. So if you buy shares in the Democrats to win, and the Democrats do win, then shares in the Democrats will be worth $100, because they've won. So if you buy a share in the Democrats for $70, and Obama wins the election, then you get your seventy dollars back, and you get a hundred. You get another thirty, so you make a profit of thirty, because the shares you bought for seventy would be worth a hundred. 
Of course, if Obama loses, then those shares that you spend seventy dollars on are now worth nothing. Okay. What's interesting, though, is that shares can be sold in advance of the event happening. <coughs> so, let's say you have um, a few weeks ago you bet on Barcelona to beat Celtic, right? And you have your little stub from Paddy Power, and if Barcelona beats Celtic, it's going to be worth 100 euro, right? But you need to go drinking tonight, because it's someone's birthday, okay? Well then, what are you going to do? Like, that ticket stub from Paddy Power has some value, because if Barcelona wins, it'll be worth a lot. So you might find someone who's prepared to buy that off you, because they're very confident that Barcelona are going to win. And way back, you know, it wasn't sure, you know, if such and such a player was going to be fit or not. But now all of Barca's players are a fit. So the chances of Barca winning are even higher than they were before. So that person might be prepared to sell you. Sorry, that person might be able to pay you cash now for that ticket stub. Or even if you were really, really desperate, you might sell it at a loss just to get the cash. So normally, if you go betting in a betting shop, you have to wait till the end to get your money. But in a prediction market and in a stock market, you can sell your shares to someone else who might be prepared to pay a higher price. Or you might take any price, depending on, on what it is you want. Maybe you want cash at that time. So if a Democrat share is bought for $70, and then sold for 80. So if you buy at 70 and sell at 80, well then that's $10 you've got. And it doesn't matter who wins. You've got that $10 now. So you've made a, a $10 profit there. So you might be prepared to take that $10 now rather than wait for, wait to see if Obama wins and maybe get, you know, an extra 30 instead of an extra 10. So shares can be sold before the event that they're predicting actually happens. Yeah. That's just very complicated. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't, um, especially then who owns it at that stage. Yeah. You know, that's a question of ownership. It doesn't come up in, in this kind of scenario. So, generally, the price of a share then can be interpreted as the market's estimation of the probability that that event will occur. So, if people are paying $70 for Obama shares, then you could take it that the market is thinking that Obama has a 70% chance of winning. Okay? No. Some markets offer pairs of contracts that you can trade individually, but the prices prices are linked. Do you close the windows there? Um, you can't smell it sitting near the windows, of course. <laughs> Sounds like the fire alarm, but it's not for us. People may come running here for refuge, but we don't have to do anything to know. <laughs> so, so, obviously, if people are prepared to if people think there's a 65% chance that Obama is going to win, then I guess they think there's a 35% chance that the other guy will win. You know? So sometimes you have individual contracts that are traded and priced separately, but their prices are, are linked, connected in some way. No. So where the prediction market is trying to decide if an event is going to happen or not, the payouts are typically $100 or nothing. However, if you're trying to predict a number, let's say a percentage, then the payout for the shares can be a value that's proportional to the number you're trying to predict. So if I wanted to figure out how many, score, how many goals Barcelona were going to score, I might say, well, if you have a share 
in Barcelona, that would be worth $20 for every goal that they score in that particular match. Now, if Barca doesn't score, the share is worth nothing. But if they get four goals, then that's worth $80. So in that scenario, a price of $45 might mean that the market thinks that Barca is going to get like two goals. Whereas a price of $5 might mean the market thinks they're probably not going to score at all. In situations where you're trying to predict a percentage, which is what we might be doing, what would happen is um, the share would be worth what the percentage turns out to be. So you can, for example, buy contracts where you're trying to figure out what percentage of the vote Obama will get. So if he gets 65% of the vote, then Obama contracts will be worth 65 cents. And if Romney gets 40% of the vote, which would be wouldn't add up, if he got 35% of the vote, then his shares would be worth 35 cents. So that's not as risky, because you do get something back, but the potential profit isn't as great either. So if you buy shares in Obama at $50, and he gets 65% of the vote, then those shares will be worth $65. So you make a profit. So when you're trying to predict a percentage, for example, you value the contracts in that way. No. So prediction markets behave like stock exchanges. And one way you can make money is that you can buy something when the price is low and then sell it later when the price is higher and pocket the cash. You have shares, someone else wants, someone else wants them, they're prepared to pay a higher price, you can sell them. And that's profit you get irrespective of what the final outcome is. So, you know, if you, if you buy shares and you're reasonably confident something's going to happen, but if someone is way more confident and wants to pay more, well, maybe you could sell them your shares and just keep the cash. So, if you think the price of a share is low, then you should buy it. If you, but the price is very, very important, okay? So you're not just looking to see if the event is going to happen or not. The price is, is an important factor. So let's say, for example, that the current price for Barcelona to beat Celtic was $95. The price for a draw was $4. And the price for Celtic to win was $1. No. Even if you are quite convinced, actually, that Barca is going to win. And if you think Barca is probably going to do it on the night, there is an issue with the price of Celtic. Do you mean you could buy 10 Celtic shares for $10? And if on the off chance Celtic wins, you'd have $1,000 then. So that's kind of a good deal. Like the price for Celtic, I think, is too low. No, I still think Barca would win. But at that price, it would probably be worth a few bob on Celtic. I mean, that's the equivalent of Paddy Power giving you 100 to 1 on Celtic to win. No, even if you thought Barca was probably going to do it, that's a bet you might take. So you have to look at the price, and if you move the price in the right direction, you can, in general, on average, make a profit. No, if you think the price of a share is too high, you should sell shares. So if you have shares, if you, you know, bought Barca shares at $95, and then there was a small bus, bus crash and a couple of them broke their legs, you know. All of a sudden, Celtic might be looking like a, a good deal, you know, a good, they might have a good chance. But maybe you might decide to sell your shares because you think they're not worth as much as, as you think the price of them, the current price is too high. Now, an interesting thing you can do in a stock market is that you can sell shares you don't even own. So if you think the share price of something is too high, you can short it, it's called. And what you're doing there 
I mean, if you buy shares and the price goes up, you make money. It's easy to see how that happens. When you're shorting shares, you're betting against a stock. You're betting on the price going down. Now, shorting, technically what you're doing when you're shorting is you're borrowing shares, selling them at the current price, hoping that the price will go down so you can buy the shares back at a lower price and then give back the shares you borrowed and keep the difference. No, that's all a bit complicated. Okay? But thankfully, a lot of prediction market sites have interfaces that are very simple and straightforward and they take care of the, the heavy lifting. So on the in-trade website, you can basically bet for Obama to win or bet against Obama to win. And that's your choice. And you don't have to worry about, you know, are you buying long or short or whatever. It's like, it's one or the other. And you can pick, and it'll do the maths, and it'll work it out. Now, you may have to have money in the bank in order to, you know, bet against someone. You still have to have money to do that. Inkling also has a nice interface because it makes it, it nice and, and simple. Okay? No. Suppose you bought a lot of shares and a lot of things, okay? And then you see a really good deal that you want to bet on. You know, you think, you think there's, a, there's a, a major pro mispricing going on in a particular contract. You might say, I want to get in on that because that's totally wrong. If you've no money, what you can do is you can cash out of the positions that you're in. So if you've no money left, you can basically sell your shares in other contracts, take the cash, hopefully for a profit, and then use the money to buy something else. So you can cash out as well of any positions that you're in. Now what I want to do, and this is where you guys come in, is I want you guys to bet on the pass rate for this module. So what percentage of the people in this class are going to pass this module? So maybe maybe a hundred's too high. Maybe it won't be quite a hundred. Okay? And I also want you to bet on the average attendance rate for this module up to and including week 10. So I wonder is it 90%? Perhaps it's perhaps it's a fraction of 90, we'll see. Do you know? No. What's interesting is there are separate contracts for all of the groups of students taking this module. And what's interesting is that every participant can bet in every market. So you could bet on other people as well. Now, you probably wouldn't be doing that because you don't, you don't have, you don't have any, any particular information about how the other modules are going. But let's say, suppose you saw one contract where one class, the people in the class had decided that the pass rate for the class was going to be 20%. And you're like, well, I mean, I'm taking web development fundamentals too. It's not that hard, lads. You might decide to buy in that case because you know it couldn't possibly be as bad as, as 20%. No, maybe you haven't met them. Maybe you have met them. Who knows? Similarly, for example, I mean, you might be, um, you might be passing a pub one night and the D-Webs and ITM group are having a class party the day before an exam, you know, and you see them falling around drunk on the floor and you think, okay, well, I'm betting against those boys, like, because, you know, they're, um, they're, they're screwed, you know. But I think for the most part, you would probably just bet on the markets, you know, relating to your group, okay? Now, the contracts don't have yes or no answers, so the payouts will be based on the values. So Maeve is going to come back to me with the pass rate and the attendance rate. We'll plug those in then, and then people will, you know, people who have moved the price in the right direction, who've guessed right, will, will make profit. Hmm? Pretend money. Pretend money. Like I'm going to give you all $5,000 and expect to see you again. <laughs> you know? No. Yeah. 
So, now, so this side has a nice interface because you just decide whether you want to bet something up or down, and then you can bet a little or bet a lot. So, if you see the price for the pass rate for a particular group is fifty is fifty dollars or fifty percent, well, you might decide that that's too low. So you should bet on that to go higher. Alternatively, if you think the price is too high, you could bet on it to go to go lower. And what's nice is you can bet a little or you can bet a lot. Okay, depending on how much money you want to put into a, a particular particular market. Okay. So participation is is voluntary, and I'll send you an email, and you can follow the link and sign up to the website and stuff. You need your like you'll have to make a username and password and whatever. Typically, the trading would be under a pseudonym, so you don't have to use your real name. No, I know who the real. I know the, I'll be able to map the pseudonyms to the real names. But if you use a makey uppy name, no one else would need to know who you are. But it doesn't matter whether they know or not. Although people often say that one of the value, one the markets where people can trade anonymously, and um, you know often do better. Like if your boss is saying, you know, we're going to sell a million printers, and you're like, no, we're not. You know, maybe it's better if you do that anonymously. Okay. No. There will be some prizes, but I don't have I don't have details of the prizes yet. The worst prize will be, you know, an iPad shuffle. That's the worst thing anyone will win. An iPad shuffle. That's the best prize. That's the worst prize. Oh, yeah. No. What I would probably do though, what I would probably do though is that I would prefer a few decent prizes than rather one big one. Do you know what I mean? So if I had enough money for an iPad, I probably wouldn't spend it on one iPad. I'd probably spend it on, you know, two or three iPod touches and then get iPod shuffles with the change or something. Do you know? Um, what? Yeah, so it's just computing first years. So there's about a hundred and odd of you or something like that. Um, so what are the, what's the probability of winning a prize? Is, is, not, is not ridiculously low. Okay? No. There are four groups okay group c is my d web and itm group group r is rob's d common d net group m is mave's com one group and your group t hmm? sorry you're com one sorry sorry my apologies okay so you're group m okay no, there's one Maeve, but she has two groups. <laughs> Big difference. No. Okay. So, so you're group M. So, you'd probably be most interested in betting on group M. Now, I have put in a few other things in there as well, just to kind of spice it up a small bit. My mouse. Ah. What's going on? Okay, no. So, um, we should have some here. Oops, okay, sorry we don't. Um, no. So, um, Okay. So if you pay attention now, I'll show you that working, okay? So I have put in, or not, whatever, like, no. So I have put in a few sporting ones here if people want to to bet on those just kind of for the practice. So I want to make a prediction, for example, the current market price, the current prediction is that Munster has pushing a 50% chance of beating Racing Metro. Okay? Now, I've never heard of Racing Metro, and I don't know much about rugby either, but 
I kind of fancy Monster's chances. So I might decide to bet on Monster. Now, if I bet a little, okay, I could bet $148 to push the price up a bit, or I could go all the way and bet $447 to push the price a good bit. No. <laughs> No, four hundred and fifty dollars is a lot because I've only I only started with five thousand, you know. This is pretend money, yeah. What? what? You can bet more if you're fake money. So, depending on how depending on how confident I am, so depending on how confident I am. Right? I can bet a little bit of money, or a small bit more money, or a lot more money. If I'm more confident they're going to win. If I think actually they haven't much of a chance, you know, if I think they've only got a 20% chance of winning, I might decide to bet against the monster. And if I bet a lot, that could bring the price down. And if I come back in a minute and do that again, and bet more of my money, I could bring the price down even further. No. Hmm? If I if I think it's lower, I'm betting against monster. Yeah. Well, well. No, that's how much it would cost me. So, oh, that's because um, the the reason that's a very good question. The reason it's showing that okay is that I already bet on monster to win, and the price has gone up. So now, if I want to bring the price back down again, basically I'm shelling, selling my now more valuable monster shares. Okay. I already bet on monster to win, and then the price went up. I bet on monster to win when it was f like 40%. So I have lots of monster shares. Now they're worth $49. So I'm basically, by betting, I can't, it doesn't make sense for me to hold shares for monster to win and monster to lose. So what I'm doing is I'm selling my monster shares right. and getting cash back. That's why I like this interface. You don't have to worry about am I like selling shares I have or don't have, am I short selling, am I going long or short? You just say, like, you want to move the probability in the right direction. So if I thought that monster <coughs> had maybe a 30% chance, you know, I might decide to, to bet against them. Or I could, you know, talk monster up some more. I mean, I kind of, I, I think it's a good enough, but I'd, I'd happily, you know, give monster, you know, uh, a more than 50% chance of winning. Have they been playing well lately? No. Okay. Not so good. And what about racing Metro? How have they been doing? Well, Who's racing Metro? That's what I said to myself, you know. No. So I have a few other ones in there as well, just sportsy ones, just so you can um, have a go. So like Dynamo Kiev to beat Porto. No. This Barcelona one here, I start that at 80%, you know. I mean, I think, I think Barcelona will win, but I don't know if I'd be putting a lot of money in at that price. Do you know what I mean? Like... I could bet, I could risk $80 to get back 100 you know. I could risk 80 to win 20 It's probably not, I'd be happy enough now to leave it at that price, do you know what I mean? I don't think giving Barcelona an 80% chance of beating Celtic is a huge travesty, do you know what I mean? I don't think that's a ridiculous price. The um, the attendance and pass rate prices all started at 50, and most people have started, some people have started betting already, and they've betted that up. You can see that Group C has already bet that price up a bit, but they just had a lab and they were a bit bored, so I think um, they, they started betting there. Your group, um, what did we see? You were Group M? So people who don't even know you anyway think, more than 50% of you are going to pass. It was at 50 and they, they bought shares at that price. You know, which is good, you know. 
So any questions in that? So you can bet in any market. You can make all your money off Dynamo Kiev versus Porto if you want. You know, you could bet the farm on that. And if it goes your way, that's perfectly fine too. It's all the one pot of money that you have to bet as you see fit. Okay? So sometime today, you should get an email inviting you to participate. You can log in and sign up if you want, and then you might win a prize. If you're not interested, that's fine. If you're a covering gambler, stay away from this. And, you know, <laughs> yes, sir. What if you lose all your money? Then you probably don't win an iPod. No. No. I could give you more, but I won't. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, thank you.